All right, I'm excited for this video. It has been a video that I have been toiling over now for many weeks, okay? It is going to be the joining together of many critical concepts, 10 in fact, that you need to understand to either succeed or fail, to buy or not, and we don't know which way that goes, residential Australian real estate in 2022 and beyond. This is entering into a slowdown, consolidation phase at a macro level. You've got interest rate rises, you've got other themes occurring. What are the 10 concepts that we need to understand to succeed in property in 2022 and beyond? Critical information you need to understand. Let's jump right in. Number one, the concept that you need to understand is negative real interest rates. Okay, it's an, I guess it, we have to take a deep dive on this one. It's not a 101 type concept. We under, have to understand how a few things do fit together to understand how it relates to us as investors. But put it this way, when inflation is higher than the interest you're paying on a debt, which it is at the moment, we're tipping 7, 8% inflation this year and interest rates are still, you know, a variable rate is still 4%, okay? Your debt is devaluing faster than the interest you're paying back to the bank, right? That means in a very fact, that debt becomes an asset in and of itself. It's better than having cash in the bank. The debt itself is an asset, right? Sophisticated investors understand this and they look for safe haven assets in these negative interest rate times. What is the, one of the strongest leveraged safe haven assets globally? It's Australian residential real estate. It traditionally has been, and we are seeing a lot of smart, sophisticated family office, private, private wealth type money moving into residential real estate right now in Australia. The people that we're talking to that get this are piling into key uh, safe haven assets. They are setting themselves up for the next upswing. And this is all occurring right now. This is a, a concept we need to understand and this is framing the rest of the discussion today. If you'd like more information about this, we have recently released a 24 minute or so video on this topic on interest rates and how it works with inflation. Look out on our channel, we'll have a link here for that now. One concept we need to understand, let's move on. Concept number two is the state and city level property cycles, okay? Cities are moving and pushing and pulling. They're doing different things at different times. Australian property does not all increase in value and decrease in value at the same time. Some areas are consolidating, some areas in a very firm upswing at the same moment. We have to be aware of the media cycle. I used to be the owner of and publisher of Australian Property Investor Magazine, Australia's largest property investment publication, I understand the media cycle. We have to play, you know, we, we have to understand how it works and how to dig a little bit deeper. The current media cycle, what is getting clicks today is doom and gloom in property. We don't want to be operating with the herd. We want to be the wolf. We don't want to be the sheep. So we need to dig into the media cycle. Their motivation is clicks. This is an article here. Property prices fall Property price falls to accelerate. Sydney drops for third month. Wow, doom and gloom. Let's dig into this a little bit deeper. In the same article, further down, we have a chart. This is from CoreLogic, another reputable research provider. We can see here that yes, Sydney did have a 0.2% retraction, less than 1%. And I'm gonna go on to that in a moment because it didn't really. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that in a moment. We've got the data that powers this. So this, this is saying that Sydney went backwards, but the real story here, the actual, meet, you know, the storyline is Adelaide going ahead at 1.9% capital growth in one month. That's over 20% per annum. Brisbane, 1.7%, Canberra 1.3%, Perth 1.1%, even Darwin at almost 1%. This is the storyline, not this. But the title of the media, the title of the article was Doom and Gloom, Sydney Goes Backwards, right? So we have to understand that the motivation for media outlets is clicks, and we have to dig deeper. That's the next topic we need to understand. Topic number three, 
Now, everyone loves a good Bitcoin chart, okay? I've put this on here not to talk about this big correction. This is a whole nother concept. I've put this on here because this is how people trade in equities, in crypto. It's very technical in nature. It's far more advanced than typically how people look at property investment. I'm not gonna go into this in too much detail, but when we need, when we are looking at property investment, we are a, a private advisory company. We are a private research company. The way that we look at property is the same way that we look at equities and crypto. We have a core algorithm, we ingest a lot of data, and our core algorithm using artificial intelligence and Eric the data scientist and actuaries sitting out there are looking at this data and improving this algorithm. But really simply, it comes down to two main things. And those two things in that algorithm are no different to other markets, right? It is like any other market, it is based on yield and volume. Investors love yield, and when they're moving in packs, they create volume, right? And that's a signal in a market that is, uh, you know, something that is worthy of our attention, right? When you're looking at stocks, at equities, at crypto, whatever it is, it's very common to see these trading patterns, these volume charts. So we've got price, and we've got volume, and we've also got uh, yield, we've got pressure, We've got demand and supply. This is a very traditional, uh, what, what's the word? Very well established way of technical trading in equities. And it's not done in property extensively. This is how we need to understand a market. We need this level of sophistication to benefit in this environment. We have to chase yield and we have to chase volume. We don't have the yield in Sydney at the moment, okay? One, two percent yield on most properties that you might buy and we don't really have the volume. But there are other places in this country, not even regional, that are generating five or 6% yield right now with extreme volume or very positive and good volume. We need to chase those places. Just like in equities, it's the same concepts. I'm gonna really double down on this now. We need to take, I'm gonna really double down on this now. We need to look at property the same way this quant, they call them quants in hedge funds, qualitative, sorry, qualitative and quantitative analysis, there is a whole industry built around this in equities. We need to take this same approach to property and this is how we can potentially benefit in this environment. We are private advisory. We are like a hedge fund for property in residential Australia. This is what the results can generate. Okay, so when we're looking for yields and volumes, it's a very simplistic view. We're not really dependent on Sydney and Melbourne and those big cities that might be pushing and pulling. We can control our variables and pinpoint exactly across the country where it's set to deliver what we are looking for, and that is growth and good, strong yields. This is not a brag. This is not a flex. I'm using this as an example. The gold line here is our results as a company since 2015. I was featured on the, the cover story of Money Magazine back there in early 2015. These were the suburbs that we disclosed. We've been on the public record ever since. You can see our results have been very consistent and then it went upwards last year, as all things did. But the top eight capital city aggregate from ABS is going up and down, up and down and up, okay? It's wavering. When you are targeting areas at a very specific point in their timeline, when the stars are aligning for those areas and we keep finding them over and over and over again, we are still making money through the dips. Okay, that's really important. Private advisory will have to make money through the dips, right? Because then you can stabilize and find that opportunity when others cannot, because it's there. You just have to know how to find it. This gives you an example. It's a beautiful chart that was created. Uh, this is showing a market in Victoria, Corio. It's going all the way back here to the mid 2000s, right through to about 2022. You can see nothing was occurring here. There was a very dormant market, but then suddenly it rocketed off, right? There was a very particular pattern that was identified here that caused this market to rocket off. We follow these patterns across the country in times like this, there are less markets that exhibit these characteristics, 
but they are still there and you need to have, know how to find them. We don't want to be buying at the top. We don't want to be buying here and not have any growth for many years. We want to be buying here. And all these markets are push and pulling. We can see that with the Sydney news article that Sydney's going backwards, but other markets are booming. Other markets are here. Sydney is here. Uh, and, you know, it could be Timbuktu is sitting right here. We need to find Timbuktu. When we do find them, we load up. We hit them hard. Remember, this is private advisory. We need to be operating at this type of level. When we identify these opportunities, we identified Toowoomba. No one was talking about Toowoomba in late 2000s. We're all coming out of a COVID haze. We loaded up and bought over 100 properties there very quickly. Generally generated about 40 to 50% capital growth in the first 12 months across many, many purchases. We hit it hard for ourselves, our family, and our friends. When we find these opportunities, we've got to back ourselves. We've got to go in there and buy. Now, this is not a, you know, this is not a flex. This is not bragging. I'm talking to you about a quantitative uh, technical uh, focus on trying to find those buying signals to give us opportunity today. Even when Sydney and Melbourne are going backwards, even when interest rates are rising, we have to take this approach. The next element, once we have found these areas, this is element number four, we have to buy the right type of property, and I call them lipstick properties. It might sound like a funny thing to say, but when there is doom and gloom, people want to feel good. They're on the dumps. They're not feeling positive about things. What's something that is cheap and doesn't cost them much money but makes them feel better? Well, for females and maybe the odd male, it's buying lipstick. They go and spend $10 on a, on a tube of lippy and they put it on and they feel a million dollars. It perks them up. Well, guess what? Property is no different. When there is doom and gloom, there is more focus. People are buying more affordable investments. People are buying more affordable properties to live in. They're not stretching themselves out further. So in these times, we have to target lipstick properties. We're not talking off the plan apartments with crappy returns. We're, we're talking about average and above average investment. Good bones, established areas, no supply. Everyday family homes, you can have a share house, you can have a, an older couple with, with, with you know, grandparents, you can have a family, a growing family, they're all using the same house, okay, so you have broad appeal. Have value add opportunities on it, cosmetic reno opportunities, you're land banking and you're able to improve the property. These are lipstick properties under $450,000 in Australia. That is where we are focusing our attention. These are the properties that are set to benefit through these times. Lipstick properties. Concept number five. Okay? This is a chart that is unique data to Ripehouse. Okay? Eric, our uh, data scientist and actuary, has just pulled this data for us in the last 24 hours. Okay? How I'm going to explain this for you. This is Sydney, and we looked at all the sales in Sydney in the month of May, and we compared those sales in Sydney to the month of February. This data, this research on the next couple of slides is going to completely blow the media articles, the sentiment, what you're hearing out of the water. You're going to be absolutely shocked by what you see. At a high level summary, this is for houses only. These are the local government areas, if you can see that. This is the Greater Sydney area for, once again, sales in May and February. There was about 3,500 in each month, give or take. The blue line is May, right? You can say, see it's gradually shifted. So there's been more, uh, less expensive properties that are selling, okay? And the red line is February. You can see generally the red line is above the blue line here at the higher price points. So what we have seen in May is a shift in the market. So this is obviously, you know, confirming that the median price, and that's a key word, the median price in Sydney has lowered in May. This is confirming what the media articles are saying. This chart is confirming that the median price has decreased. Here we had more expensive sales in Brisbane, in, in, sorry, in February when the red line was above the blue. And now in May, the blue line is above the red, which means we're having more less expensive sales in May. The median price has decreased. But does that really mean that properties are worth less money? It could just mean that there are less more expensive properties selling, or it could also mean that yes, 
those individual assets are selling for less. They are worth less. We don't know. This chart is not telling us which, but I'll show you which chart will tell us which. We definitely know that there are less, more expensive properties selling. It is shifting downwards. And we're just trying to confirm once again, is it because properties are devaluing or there are less properties selling at the higher end of the market? Let's have a look at this property here. It is 87 The Avenue, Canley Vale. We've got no affiliation with this property. In the comments below, I would love to hear your thoughts. Press pause. What do you think is so special about this property? Remember, we're trying to work out, before I go on and, and I'll wait for your comments, we're trying to work out, are properties selling for less than they previously did? Are they devaluing? Or is the, the, are there less, more expensive properties selling? And it's just that segment of the market that is not turning over. Now, I'm going to tell you what's special about this property. This is the only property, one property in Sydney that sold in May for less than it was originally purchased for. Only one property, and I can't make this up. It's not hundreds, it's not zero. It is the only property in Sydney that sold in May for less than it was originally purchased for. You can see here, it's sold in, the last sold in 2020 for $1.335 million. And it sold here in May 2022 for $1.18 million. One property. And, you know, we can have our arguments about what it is about this property that has caused it to go backwards. But we are seeing the median price in Sydney and other places across the country decrease because of a lack of activity at the top end of the market. This is something that is very predictable when things start to slow down. Properties are not necessarily devaluing. It's just that the top end of the market is not transacting. This is evidence. One property in the Sydney, greater Sydney area that sold for less than it was originally purchased for. All right, the evidence is there. Let's move on. What I'm looking here is Sydney property prices over the last 30 years. I'm particularly interested in this period here between 2010 and 2015. You know, you could even make the arguments up here to 2017. This is a really strong upswing, all right? So let's remember those dates, maybe 2012 up to 2017, all right? That's the period we're looking at. This is the last time that Sydney really boomed. We obviously had a boom up around here around COVID, but this is the period that we're really looking at in this study. What we're looking at here is interest rates. Interest rates at this point, when the market started booming, were going upwards. And then yes, they did come back down again, but even when they did come back down, they were still dramatically higher, 3% higher than where they got down to recently. So people are forecasting that interest rates are gonna come back up to this level. Well, they were far higher than this, and the boom started when interest rates started going upwards. And the boom kept going as for whatever reason, interest rates started coming back down. This was the period that the boom occurred. And interest rates were up to 5% higher than they were a few months ago. So we, we have to understand this is really clear evidence that higher interest rates, you know, Sydney markets, even Melbourne markets, Sydney markets, they can still boom when interest rates are far higher. Interest rates have been at emergency low, record low levels, and they are still at dramatically low levels. And even if they went up another 2%, they are still at extremely low levels, okay? When I was buying many of my properties, you know, during the GFC, and I'll get more on that later, interest rates were six, seven, eight, nine percent I was paying back on my mortgages. You know, we're in this territory over here, okay? Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane's, Perth, they can still boom when interest rates are, you know, two, three, four percent higher than where they are now. And that's shown over the longer term. We have to buy the right property deal. We can't just go out and buy anything. We saw the concept of a lipstick property. This is what they look like. Okay, these are a lot of the deals that we've recently been doing. They all look very similar, very, very similar types of homes. We just have to do the simple things really well. That's how we generate a return in these types of conditions. Okay, we have to make money at any time. 
We can't just throw a dart at a dartboard in 2021 and make money and think that we're amazing. We have to now back it up and make money today. And that is now doing the small things really well and buying the right type of property deal. We call them a push property. It's about making money in four ways, okay? We purchase them under market value. We negotiate really effectively. We're in markets through private advisory where there are no other investors that are talking about it or active. When we're talking about it in a group, we've got this artificial pressure that's been placed on it. We wanna buy outside of the masses and back ourselves. Purchase under market value, uplift the property through renovation, cosmetic renovation. We want to save positive cash flow per week, and we want to generate high performance capital growth. This is a really interesting concept, guys. In, you know, as interest rates are increasing, right? And I might sort of illustrate that now with the next, the next slide here. Actually, I'll come back to that point. I do want to talk about labor and um, the labor government and the help to buy scheme first. Labor government has just put the biggest rocket you could imagine under the $450,000 or below price point in Australia. Okay, they've come in here and allowed uh, investors and, you know, or, or, sorry, owner occupiers and buyers to spread their deposits far further and subsidize the purchase and housing. I have filmed a video on this recently on the YouTube channel. This is a huge rocket that is gonna be placed under the lipstick type properties across Australia. It's gonna be, you know, a, a huge stimulus and traditionally Australian governments have stimulated property through, sorry, stimulated the economy through property. This is just the latest example of how they're putting a floor under property values and they are starting with lipstick type affordable assets. This is what's gonna round out this next price upswing. And finally, I'm gonna come back to the, the previous concept I bought most of my properties during the GFC. You can imagine the, the storylines and the news cycles that were going on then. Investors are fickle in many cases. We have to be a wolf. We cannot be a sheep. We have to potentially invest when others are fearful because that's when we can really set ourselves up for creating a legacy into the future. Right? This is a type of opportunity that doesn't come around very often. And I'm saying that from my experience and a long-term perspective, all right? It's really easy to make money in upswings, but when you are able to make money in a downswing, you're able to consolidate those gains, build an asset base, and position yourself for the next upswing. And that is how fortunes are made. That is how legacies are made that you can now pass down into the generations. You might have a million dollars worth of equity in your home. You might have made a million dollars worth of you from your property portfolio. This is how you turn that into $10 million. This is how you create the legacies that can be really life-changing and pass down to generations. But when you do it, you have to buy the right type of, of property. We have to be strategic. We have to understand how all of this fits together so we can capitalize, uh, I, I guess, consistently, and we can lower the risk that we have as investors. I would love to hear your comments and feedback on this as a concept, guys. Uh, any comments that you do have, we'll take the time to answer them directly. We can even film follow-up videos and things. If you think this information is useful, please forward it to your friends and family. Drop it in onto a Facebook group or a, uh, you know, a property group uh, forum that is out there if you think it's relevant. Spread the word, it will be much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you're the first to be notified of any new videos. And please, like the video. It means a lot to me, it really does. Uh, look forward to your thoughts. Thank you very much.